welcome to an Epic Mod Am Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I have your WWE SummerSlam 2020 full show review and results for you guys. You know, coming into the show wasn't too hyped up for it, you know, not too hyped. It just doesn't feel like SummerSlam season. I wasn't big into it. There's some matches on this card that I was just like, eh, you know, am I, am I really into it? There's some rematches on this card, and it's just not the best card. It just doesn't scream SummerSlam to me, but usually coming into shows that have that particular aspect to them, they end up usually being a lot better than I imagine them when I'm going into it. So would that be the case for SummerSlam 2020, guys? We're going to find out together. I'm going to let you guys know what I thought of the matches, what took place at the show, any cool attires, anything going in, where I think we go from here, what I personally thought of the matches and show. Let's dive into SummerSlam 2020 and break down everything that took place and give you my thoughts and opinions on it. So starting off, guys, I'm pretty sure this was the first matchup of the night on the kickoff show for SummerSlam. We have the United States Championship match between Apollo taking on MVP. The Hurt Business is not allowed at ringside. They are banned from ringside. Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin both could not be at ringside for this matchup, and that played a big role in the matchup. Apollo Crews comes out in a sick-ass gear. It was, it was, you know, it's his normal gear, but it was in white, and you guys know how I am about white attires. It had some gold accents. It was looking flames. The U.S. Champion was looking good. Coming into this match, I was very worried for Apollo. I thought for sure that he was going to be losing the championship here just because the way, you know, he's been riding high for a while and, you know, they like to cut the rug up under people and MVP and the Hurt Business are the big faction over on Monday Night Raw. So I was actually worried for Apollo coming into this matchup. However, he does get the victory and it was a clean victory. Great victory over, over MVP right here. I know this is a rematch, a matchup that I wasn't looking forward to because we've already seen it. He's already beat MVP. Now MVP needs to get the hell away from Apollo and uh, I guess Yes, nothing is to show for the Cedric Alexander. I thought he was going to recruit Cedric Alexander and Cedric Alexander was going to cost Apollo Crews. We got teases of that on Monday Night Raw. However, we did not get that. Nothing took place. Apollo Crews wins here and I don't know where MVP and the Hurt Business go from here. I'll be interested to see how they fare on Monday Night Raw now, but hopefully this feud is over. So to start off our main show, guys, we did have the first of our two women's championship matches. First up, we had Bayley taking on Asuka, and of course, later on in the night, we will have Sasha taking on Asuka. So Asuka serving double duty here tonight, going after both the Raw and SmackDown Women's Championships. And in this matchup, I thought this was a hard-hitting matchup. I thought there was some good back and forth. I mean, you have two of your best workers in the company going head-to-head -head here. This is more of a SummerSlam matchup. Two marquee names here, Asuka versus Bayley, Sasha on the outside. Sasha really didn't get involved that much, I don't recall her ever really getting involved or affecting the matchup in a big outcome. But this was a hard-hitting matchup. I didn't necessarily see. It kind of seemed like the match just kind of ended abruptly, but you know, it wasn't anything too over the top, but it was hard-hitting. It was physical. Both women brought it, and it was a solid overall match. In the end, Bayley does retain the SmackDown Women's Championship, and after the matchup, Sasha Banks gets in the ring and beats down on Asuka, I guess trying to get in some extra shots for their matchup. You know, the, the more hurt that Asuka is going into the matchup, the more susceptible she is to losing the match. So I guess Sasha Banks was trying to take advantage of that here and beat down on Asuka as the matchup was over. But Bailey does retain and I'm probably expecting the same thing out of Sasha. We will see what happens later in the show. Next up, guys, we had the Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Street Profits taking on Angel Garza and Andrade. And I am a big fan of Andrade and Angel Garza as a team, especially with Zelina Vega there. In this matchup, you know, I thought there were some pretty cool athletic maneuvers going back. I mean, when you have these four guys in the ring, what else do you expect? I mean, you have great athleticism. You have great in-ring technicians here going at it. And this one was okay. You know, nothing, again, nothing too spectacular. Uh, I think the finish was pretty cool, like the, the backwards, like frogs splash that Montez Ford does. Very, very nice there. His, his frog splashes are some of the best in the game, no doubt. But Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins retain the Raw Tag Team Championships. I did not see this coming one bit. I thought for sure that they were going to lose the Raw Tag Titles. That did not take place. Angel Garza and Andrade lose. And I don't know where they go from here. You know, I thought they were going to be built up, take the championships and stuff, and, and that's just not the case here. So I don't know where they go. I feel like they're really lost in the shuffle. I thought it would have been nice to see them win the Raw Tag Titles here. It did not happen and so the Street Profits are still your Raw Tag Team Champions, and I guess that's okay. I just really want to see Angel Garza and Andrade do something bigger, and I thought as a team they were going to get their stuff together, but it looks like that is not in the plans for them. But the Street Profits remain your Raw Tag Team Champions. 
Next up, guys, was the no disqualification loser leaves WWE match between Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Now, coming into this matchup, I was kind of invested because of how good Sonya Deville is, man. I truly believe that she is the best woman in the company on the microphone. I genuinely believe that, and until somebody else proves me wrong, I think Becky Lynch is wonderful as well. I think that some people are hit and miss sometimes. Sonya Deville is, is a baller on the mic, or I should say was a baller, because she lost this matchup. She lost the matchup, and I don't know where she goes from here. You know, usually these loser leaves WWE things are not set in stone. It's usually, you know, there's going to be some sort of loophole that gets her back in the company, whether it be under a different name or she comes back in a long time from now at the Royal Rumble. I don't know. I don't know where they're going with it, but Sonya Deville loses the matchup. This matchup was kind of weird because it kind of seemed like to me you could tell how much better Sonya Deville is. It's probably from her MMA background. Mandy Rose isn't bad at all. I think she is getting better and better, but it just seemed a lot more believable to me with uh, Sonya Deville and her moveset and her timing and things like that. I just felt like Sonya Deville was much better in this matchup. And I truly wanted Sonya Deville to win because of how good she is and how good she is on the microphone. She makes it very believable. And I'm a big Sonya Deville fan. But she did lose this matchup, so I do not know where we go from here. I'm, I'm actually intrigued to see what we get. But she lost this matchup. She lost this matchup. Mandy Rose won, and I don't think it had the emotional impact that everybody was hoping for. It just, you know, Otis came out after the matchup. It was supposed to be like this big thing and celebration. I don't know. I just wasn't connecting with it for whatever reason. But, you know, this match was what it was. I'm more intrigued by the story than the match itself. It was a it was decent. It was kind of slow and lackluster at times. But Mandy Rose does win. And I guess we'll just have to see if Sonya Deville is actually truly done with WWE or not. Next up, guys, we had the street fight between Dominic Mysterio taking on the Monday Night Messiah in Seth Rollins. This feud obviously runs back to Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins' feud. The eye for the eye, you guys get it. We had Dominic Mysterio in a marquee matchup, high-profile matchup with Seth Rollins on SummerSlam. And to be honest with you, coming into this matchup, man, was not a fan of it. You know, I just was not buying into Dominic. I just feel that he needs to get significantly better before being in a marquee matchup with Seth Rollins. Now, in this matchup, was he pretty impressive? Yes, I will say. I think he was pretty impressive in this. You know, I still think that he has a long way to go, but I thought this was pretty good showing for him. Would I have still booked this match? No, I wouldn't. Do I think he belonged in this matchup with Seth? Probably not, but I think that Seth did a really good job with him, the good back and forth. We had some weapon spots, kendo stick, a lot of storytelling in this thing. There was a ton of storytelling and like drawn out things taking place. Rey Mysterio got handcuffed to the bottom, to, uh, to, to the bottom rope at one point. Buddy Murphy was helping out. Dominic's mother came out at one point. Can we mention the fact that Seth Rollins had on the beautiful Rey Mysterio like Halloween Havoc 97 attire going on. Looking beautiful in that fuchsia pink. I need somebody to make me a custom of that as soon as possible. But besides that, I mean, this matchup was cool. I like the story of it. You know, it was it was solid. I like the drama that we got in this matchup. As far as in-ring, was it bad? No. I thought, I thought it was pretty solid for what it was. I don't think it was anything over the top amazing, but I did like the storytelling with it. Wasn't big on like, I wasn't really invested in it, but I did like the story that they told in the ring at SummerSlam. But at the end of the matchup, Rey Mysterio is handcuffed to the bottom rope and Seth Rollins hits a curb stomp in front of Rey Mysterio on Dom, pins him 1-2-3 and wins the matchup. So Seth Rollins does get the victory. I think this was the right call here. I did not want to see Seth Rollins lose in this matchup to Dominic. And overall, you know, it is where it is. I hope this is the end of the feud now. Like, just have Seth Rollins move on now. We need him in a, you know, more higher profiles. Get away from the mid card, man. Let's get this man into some big time programs and just see where we go. But I think Dominic, yeah, he has a bright future. I think he's going to be all right, and I hope he continues to get better and work on his craft. But Seth Rollins did defeat Dominic here at SummerSlam. Next up, guys, we had the Raw Women's Championship match between Asuka and Sasha Banks. This, is, of course, is the flip side of what we got earlier in the night with Bayley versus Asuka. And this was very similar to the Bayley matchup. You know, very hard-hitting. Again, you have two great women's workers in the ring. So there was, uh, there was no worries here. I mean, you knew it was going to be a solid matchup. Some good drama in this matchup. Hard-hitting, even some good reversals and stuff like that. But at the end of the match, guys, Asuka locks in the Asuka lock, and she becomes Raw Women's Champion. So Sasha Banks and Bayley's storyline that I thought we were going to get is no longer going to be happening. You know, I thought it was going to be a champion versus champion Survivor Series clash. I thought that would have been the move. That was absolutely the move. I don't know why they didn't go with that, but Asuka's your new Raw Women's Champion. I really don't know why we're doing this title flip-flop thing. I feel like she was just champion a second ago. Now she's back champion. I don't know. I just didn't agree with this decision. I, I don't know, man. I don't feel like this was the right move. I absolutely wanted to see Bayley versus Sasha, which is probably what we're going to end up getting, but I think champion versus champion or Survivor Series would 
would have been beautifully booked, man. It would have just wrote itself, really. All you had to do was just sit back and let it happen. But Asuka's your new Raw Women's Champion, man. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Not the way I would have booked it, but, you know, solid matchup, I guess. Nice drama, but there you go. Next up, guys, we have the WWE Championship match, and one of the matches that I think I was the most looking forward to, Drew McIntyre taking on Randy Orton. Randy Orton being one of my favorites of all time coming in. I love Drew McIntyre as well. So this one was intense, man. It was a physical matchup. They beat the hell out of each other. We got the signature Randy Orton suplex under the under the announce table. We got we got turnbuckle post shots, lots of submissions, and, and just a physical matchup between two grown men. I don't think it was necessary. It definitely wasn't just a match that's just going to get you up out of your seat, but it was like an old school, just classic WWE Championship match, if, if that makes any sense. It is a Randy Orton match, so I mean, you know, take with that what you will, but I don't know. I, I don't know. It just didn't live up to the hype, I don't think, for me. It wasn't a bad match at all, but it just wasn't anything to write home about, at least in my personal opinion. I actually missed the end of the matchup because I was helping put my son to sleep, but Drew McIntyre does retain the WWE Championship. You know, I can roll with this. I didn't really care who won this matchup because I was fine with either. You had the top baby face versus the top heel. And so Drew McIntyre remains your WWE champion, which I'm totally cool with. But yeah, that was that was pretty much it, man. Just a tough physical matchup here. And Drew McIntyre retains his title. And for a minute, big guys, we had the Universal Championship match between Braun Strowman taking on the Fiend Bray Wyatt here at SummerSlam for a main event. Coming into this matchup, you know, I liked the storytelling that they had. You know, uh, I, I liked their little uh, swamp fight. I liked everything going on with that. I love the imagery of the Fiend and stuff. I will say Firefly Funhouse Bray is better. But, you know, the Fiend coming out here, he, he was ruined to hell in a cell forever ago. But, I don't know, I was very sick of Braun Strowman being champion. So, it changed hands tonight. It changed hands tonight. The Fiend is your new Universal Champion. They battled all over the arena. Multiple power moves. You know, your simple Braun Strowman, simple matchup. You know, power moves and, and power slams and, and finishers left and right and throwing into stuff and power moves mainly. So that's what we got for this thing. At the end of the matchup, Braun Strowman takes out a box cutter, starts cutting up the mat, lifting up the mat to expose the wooden boards underneath. Very similar to what we've seen in different street fights and different matches over the history of professional wrestling. So the Fiend pretty much Uranagi's Braun Strowman Strowman onto the platform, onto the wooden boards. He then hits a Sister Abigail. He may have even hit two Sister Abigails or two multiple slams, but he hits a Sister Abigail. One, two, three. The Fiend is your new Blue Universal Champion. And so now we are getting the crowning moment for The Fiend here. At SummerSlam, you know, he became your new Universal Champion, Braun Strowman. The monster is gone. Two monsters going head to head here, but The Fiend does overcome Braun Strowman. The matchup was eh, you know, it really wasn't much of anything. Again, like I said, multiple power moves. If you've seen one Braun Strowman match, very similar to those, except you throw in some spots here and there with some, you know, weaponry and things of that nature. So the Fiend's just chilling in the ring as your new Blue Universal Champion. And out of nowhere, out of nowhere, the big dog, the big dog Roman Reigns returns. The MDT Champion, the big dog, returns and takes out the Fiend. And he was looking good, man. He was looking real jacked. He looked great. It looks like he got veneers or some teeth work done because his, his teeth definitely look different. It makes his jawline even look a little bit different, but I mean, he looks good. He looks good. He looked absolutely jacked. He was definitely uh, keeping up with himself over this break, but I missed the hell out of Roman Reigns, man. I, I popped hard for him to come back. When he came out, me and wifey were popping, man. We we're like, oh shit! The big dog came back, and man, it felt good, bro. I legit love this moment. You, you'll never see it coming. Well, Brad, I did not see this coming. This wasn't even on my radar. I was expecting Goldberg or, or some trash to happen, but this actually makes me want to watch SmackDown with Roman Reigns back, man. I love Roman Reigns. I'm super happy to have him back. He looks great. He he looked immaculate, and I am super excited for him to get himself back in the ring. And, dude, this is just great. I love to see the MDT champion come back. Man, that it was beautiful. I loved it. I popped so hard. And did you, see, did you guys see the spear right there by the big dog right here? On the Fiend figure right there? That was a freaking money spear. If you're nowhere, But holy crap, man. So yeah, man, that was the pop of the night for me. That was definitely the best part of the show, to be honest with you. I mean, I feel like nothing really, like, I don't know. It just didn't feel like SummerSlam to me, man. Just a very blessed show, except for the ending. I absolutely adore Roman Reigns coming back. That that made the night for sure. But anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for your SummerSlam 2020 review and results. 
I would love to know what you thought of the show down in the comment section below. What did you enjoy? What did you not enjoy? Did it feel like SummerSlam for you? The show turned out about how I thought, you know, some decent stuff here and there, nothing too immaculate over the top, just kind of meh, just kind of lukewarm, if anything, you know, just kind of that bath water that sat out, you know, that's been sitting there for an hour or so, and you get in, you're like, this sucks, but at least I'm in the bath, I guess, I, I don't know. Roman Reigns returned, though, so I'm popping hard for that, MDT champ is back. I'm on the clock in my fantasy draft. I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.